Mr. Speaker, I, as I said in my preamble, not belong because I will deliver it at a policy debate, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, but I understand the first, the mental state of the leader of the, leader of the opposition. I understand it and I feel because this morning, after he has publicly ridiculed me for stuttering, you were stuttering this morning. Mr. <laughs> Speaker, the member, the member keeps on the point. Member from Mikusov, you don't just put on your light I, and stand. I apologize. Put on your light and I acknowledge you. Please proceed, member from Mikusov. Mr. Speaker, the member is making disparaging remarks about a member. I have never and will never make remarks about him on his stuttering, okay? We all, we all, have, our, we all have our handicaps, okay? So I would just like to make that a point, Mr. Speaker. There may be other people who have done it, okay? But I would not do that, Mr. Speaker. And if I stutter, I apologize, and that's part of me being who I am. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, I will bring the video, the clip, and clip for you, Mr. Speaker. He was talking about... He was talking about St. Jude, and I'll tell you what he said. He said, they asked the leader of the opposition, what's the price of St. Jude? And he said, blah, 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 blah. You understand, Mr. Speaker? So, Mr. Speaker, so I sat, and I sat, and I heard him, and I was told not to respond. But I'm not going to respond, I'm just going to say a few things, Mr. Speaker. That's the same leader of the opposition, who said, after June the 6th, the opposition lost its right to speak. That's the same leader of the opposition who said to, to public servants, your job is to not to tell government what to do, your job is to do what the government says. That's the same leader of the opposition who stayed in this house and heard a member of his party say to the opposition, you all just start to cry, you all crying now, you all just start to cry, and said nothing. That's the same leader of the opposition who left six members in the opposition and he refused to give them, as my colleague says, not a bag of cement in the CDP program. That's the same leader of the opposition who during COVID, he gave, he did not give one member of the opposition not one bag of flour to give the constituents during COVID. That's the same leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker. And you know, and he comes here with piousness. And he thinks, he, he, he pretends he was never in government. And he just came down, and these guys are doing so, much, so many bad things. They are misleading the people. They're not saying what, that's the same leader of the Mr. Speaker. Who came to this honorable house and said, that there was 150 that would be put in a lockbox to fix roads, Mr. Speaker. I asked him, that's the man who's speaking about deceiving people. That's the guy who's speaking about not speaking the truth to the people. And I asked him every day, where is the lockbox with $1.50? Up to today, he has not responded. Up to today, Mr. Speaker. That's the same lead, lead of, leader of the opposition, Mr. Speaker. Who speaks about taxes? Mr. Speaker, you know, I was told not to respond this morning because I have ample time to respond at the policy of BBC. Mr. Speaker, I just want to make a few points because this thing is almost hurtful. When you see a gentleman, who professes to be, to have the interests of the country at heart. And he deliberately, he deliberately goes out and maligns the government. He goes out and says to investors, whatever he wants. He stands in the house and says things that are obviously not true. Let me tell you a story about taxes, Mr. Speaker. This government has given the most tax amnesties and tax reductions in the history of St. Lucia. And it didn't start with us. It didn't start with my administration. It started from since 
from the time the leader, the member for, for Viewford South, was in government, we started a process of tax reduction by, re by beginning to reduce the tax threshold. We reduced it. We, we increased it, in fact, in that the income, people's income levels, when it, right now it was it's eighteen thousand dollars. I think when we came it was thirty, and the leader and the member for before South reduced it. Here's what we've done also: we've we've said to the taxpayers of Saint Lucia, both businesses and private people, that any tax that you owe the government, including VAT, VAT, Mr. Speaker, is the tax that you collect from people and you ought to give it back to the government. There are some business people who do not pay the government back that tax. So obviously there is a fine and a penalty. We said to them, an interest, once you pay what you collect, once you pay what you collect, we will waive it and just pay the government what you collected. Just pay what you collected and we have all the penalties and interest. And he is speaking about a government that taxes people. This is a government that has reduced the tax threshold. Reduced it. And he's speaking about a government that taxes people. Mr. Speaker, makes a big fuss. And you know, if you don't listen to it, you will believe it. Oh, 2.5% levy. Mr. Speaker, when you go to borrow a, from any institution, anybody, including private people, the bank tells you what's your income. The bank tells you what your expenses. The bank tells you, they look at what is called your income vis-a-vis -vis your debt, and they give you what is called a debt ratio. And once that is okay, they give you the loan. He comes, and we know the place talking about 2.5 levy, as if the 2.5 levy was supposed to be put aside, like he said he would pull a 1. 150 aside, pull it in a box, and leave it there and take it when you want. We never said so. We said the 2.5% levy would be put in the consolidated fund and it would be used for health and security. And you talk about misleading people? You talking about misleading people, Mr. Speaker? So it makes the point. We took a prior part, the loan was, the loan from the World Bank was, part of the conditions was to, was to put the health and security levy. Part of the conditions was to increase revenue. And we choose, we choose. And made it public, we made it clear to the public that we'd put, we'd, we'd put a 2.5% levy on all goods except food, etc. But here is what he's saying, He's not saying we remove that on building materials. We remove that on medical equipment. And recently, we remove that on all sporting gear for the sports people of this country. So he comes and he talks about taxes. I want to ask the leader of the opposition, what tax has this government put on the people of St. Lucia except the 2.5% levy. What tax has this government put on the people of St. Lucia apart from the 2.5% levy and what taxes we have reduced? Mevle Mande. Mevle Mande. Master Sisa Koponza. Key tax. No jamais été à ce genre cette lucie si pas 2.5% de levy et comme on taxe nous j'a tiré. Is it Mr. Speaker? When when they did they, they when they pell when they pell that misinformation and believe because they can say it and get some surrogates to promote it, Mr. Speaker, that's the truth. But I've said this horrible house that right now. In the season that we are in, we are going to rebut all the lies and all the misinformation. And I know my colleague told me not to speak, but I have to speak.
Because, you know, when you allow these things to filter down the road, people believe it. People believe it, Mr. Speaker. When you, when you tell people that the government is taxing, what tax have you put on the public of Lucia? What extra tax? The 150, you put it. What extra tax have we put on the people of St. Lucia? And what benefits have the people of St. Lucia got since you're in government? What benefits? And what taxes did, 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 did we put? I stand in the about it. <coughs> you understand? So, it's time to speak. No. When is him? Global pressures. COVID-19. When is us? Nothing. When is them? Pressures of the outside. Um, this and that. When is us? No. Bring, bring down inflation. Reduce inflation. Mr. Speaker, this leader of the opposition, if he wants to speak the truth, must tell the world what is, the le what is global inflation when he was in government and what is global inflation now or last year. Tell the world. Tell the world what was global economic growth when you were there and what is global economic growth now. Tell the world, before COVID, which economy had the greatest dip, the, the sixth greatest drop in the world and the entire world had COVID? Tell the public that. Tell the public. Tell the public, Mr. Speaker. Tell the public, because you know, you open that door, you open it, and you believe you can say it in, a, in your normal style, or, or, or gone cry and say, look at what they're doing me. The, the, let, let the opposition speak. You are the one, you are the one, Mr. Speaker, who put barriers outside the parliament to prevent people from coming to the parliament. You are the one who removed the loudspeakers from out there, for people not to hear the proceedings of parliament. You see, your history, your history will haunt you. Your history. Because, you know, you've tried to change so many times. You're the one who said, and you've promoted the most disgusting thing about people and their families, and you said nothing about it. Your history, your history, your history. So, no matter how you hide, any time you accuse anybody or something, we can show a tip where you or members of your party said worse or did worse. Anytime. I challenge you. Anything you say, I can challenge you where you said worse or you did worse. Your history is following Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, he says that I misled the House when I spoke about the use of the, the DPC loan. As if it's the first time. As if it's the first time the country has had a DPC loan. First time, here's what I did. I do not hide the DPC loan in the, in, the, in the bill, in the provision bill. I came up front and I said, this is going to be used for budgetary support. What is budgetary support? Budgetary support is helping in climate change. Budgetary support is you know, all these kind of things because all government, of, all government expenditure is encompassed in a budget. So what's the point? What is the point? And he says, I said, I misled the public because I said that the loan was used for tourism. That's what I said. That's what I said. I said, I said, Mr. Speaker, I said, budgetary support of SDR 26.7 million or US dollars 35 million and number two, SDR 3.8 million or US dollars 5 million allocated to complete activities under the OECS Regional Tourism Operators Project. That's what I said. Where, what, is, what is misleading in that? Isn't the Tourism competitive, Competitiveness Project part of the enhancement of the economy of St. Lucia? What, 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 what's, what's so misleading, what's so grievous in that? Now, he says, that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't tell the public that the heaven security levy was a part of a condition of the loan. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, 
the DPC, part of the conditions was revenue enhancement. I said so. I said so. Now, when he says I didn't say something, he can never quote what I said, you know. They can never quote what I said. If they don't cut me it, if they don't cut it or move it, they can never say what I said. Like the appointment of the deputy speaker. He was all over the place writing letters, writing letters, you know, well, letters. Bar Association, I, I will appoint somebody today who is not a member of the House. I never said so. He wrote the UN, he wrote yes. the ambassador to whoever he can find. Say, I am breaking the constitution. I never said that I would appoint a deputy speaker from outside the house today. I never said so. Mr. Speaker, so let's get back to, let's get back, and I'm sorry, because some of my colleagues didn't, didn't want me to speak. My Mr. Speaker, I have to, because these things go out in public. And some people repeat it on the radio. And some people believe it. Mr. Speaker, let's look at the management. Let's look at how the St. Lucia economy has advanced and the progress in the St. Lucia economy. Mr. Speaker, you know, a measure of the robustness of the solution economy, Mr. Speaker, is something called the primary balance. A measure of how the economy is robust is the revenue that government collects without imposing more taxation. Without imposing more taxation. I said in public how much the health and security levy collected. I said so in public. I didn't hide it. The public knows. And in the policy statement, the public will hear how much we have spent on health and security and how much we intend to spend on health and security because the public is benefiting. The mothers of this country are benefiting from the maternal care, health care, from the Ministry of Health. The people who are over 80 that you ridiculed, that you put pampers in your demonstration, you ridicule them. These people are benefiting from the, you call them telly, telly tubbies. The people that you say you let the people so much, but you'll never get, if any of these men or women here do anything that I get up by telling me wrong. And they know that. But you have accepted everything because you're not in, you're not in control of your party. That's your problem. So you cannot, and that is why somebody said, Sapa Flambo. Because the flambo we know is a flambo of respect. A flambo that does not go into the gutters how that flambo is going. A flambo that we go, a flambo of decency. I run elections against Romanus Lansico. Romanus Lansico has never gone down to that heights, never gone to that level. We criticized each other heavily. We fought. We fought. But when he was ill, we spoke. He never had this hatred and this envy that you perpetuate in this country. Never. Because you've lost government. People, you, you're perpetuating hatred. You're making people envious of each other. You're making people, you, I mean, Mr. Speaker, you know, you know, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition says that there is no growth in this country. There is no growth. There, there, there is nothing. This country is in a mess. They, I mean, they made a big fuss about roads, roads, roads. We don't fix the roads. He knew very well that I never control the, the, the weather right now. The roads are improved, are improving. Not a word said. 
Not a word. Because he did not know. You see, as we always do, do them, we are men and women who plan. <clears throat> we are men of women. The medium high, Mr. Speaker, started under him. Yeah. Under him. <laughs> under him. <laughs> under him. <laughs> under him, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> you understand? So, let's get back to, to Rhodes. They made a big fuss. We came here. And we came here. And we agreed. We understood. And we said that the roads were in a state that was not acceptable. All of us agreed. All of us agreed to that. But we said that there are certain factors that had to be considered. Number one, the road infrastructure in this country has been under tremendous pressure for a long time. But our Eastern Roads, when he was the member of Viewford South, we were the ones who built the highway from Sufre to Viewford. We were the ones. We are the ones who resurfaced the East Coast Road. We were the ones. We are the ones who built all the roads in the Carelli area. We were the ones. And we were the ones who had a loan completely negotiated for the Cassius Grosse Highway, which they stopped. So, Mr. Speaker, when you, so you know, they come and they, they, they grant charge about roads. But our history, and the, our history is clear, Mr. Speaker. So that is why all they have to deal with is misinformation. So let's get back. Let's, uh, let's, get, uh, let's get back to listen to his theory. Listen to his theory. <clears throat> you must try your best in a small open economy. You must try your best for your inflation rate. Now, now you know, he got stuck in, in the middle. He got stuck in the middle. He got stuck in the middle. Your inflation rate must not be more than your growth rate. Oh, my. A small open economy. Your inflation rate must not be more than your growth rate. So you must do something to bring down your inflation rate. Now you think, no. Now you think I can deal with that? But, I'm, but you see, my, my colleagues told me no answer. <coughs> Leave him alone. But, but how you can get involved in that? How can somebody stand up in a parliament, in a small open economy, and say that we can control our economic growth with our inflation growth? Why even? Then he goes again. This is what he says again. Listen. Where you import most of your products, we have no control. We import gas, we import diesel, we import most of our food. We import all that. How, so how, how, how can we control our inflation rate? Oh, 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 what's the, what's the, uh, <laughs> then, he comes. And listen, so your economic growth must not be higher than your debt, your debt ratio. Oh, you want me to speak up? Your debt. Your economic, growth must not be, your, your economic growth must be higher than your debt. Now, Mr. Speaker, if your, if your, then the growth of your debt. You understand what I say? That's that what you say. Then the growth of your debt. Which is different than your, the, the, your, your debt growth. Even if you think it's different, it's different. Now, Mr. Speaker, listen to the logic. Listen, 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 listen. A country can raise revenue, Mr. Speaker, by three sources. Three. One, two, three. One, taxes. Two, loans. Three, grants. Three areas. Let's look at each of them, one after the other. Taxes. What kind of taxes do you have? Personal tax. Corporate tax, which is indirect taxation, and indirect taxation, VAT, etc., etc. How do you raise corporate tax? You raise corporate tax by investment and taxing businesses. But the truth is, to incentivize that growth, you have to give 
tax rebates and forego revenue because of tax incentives that you give. So the investment that comes in, because of the taxes, the taxes you have to forego to create the investment, your level of collection of taxation from your investment, your direct collection of taxes is lowered because most of these investors pay no tax because we have to incentivize them to come to St. Lucia. So who is left to pay the tax? Local business people? <coughs> who do not pay taxes? Who, most of the time, the taxes are low. Local business people, banks and foreign institutions. So the problem is, you have to get your level of investment at a particular level, Mr. Speaker, where the multiplier effect of that investment created by employment Etc. Mr. Speaker, is such that you can enhance your revenue, or else you have to go for indirect taxes. So what have we done? What have we done? We've reduced the threshold of direct taxes, and we've further enhanced the environment for regular people to begin to build their homes or to improve their homes by removing VAT on building on basic bill material. That's where we've gone. So how can you tell me that? A country that has just come through a crisis of COVID, which you didn't create, but you tried to blame us for the Ukraine war. <coughs> a country that has come through that stage of developing the speaker can control its inflation and can stop its debt, growth of debt from being more than its economic growth. Three factors in one. In one. Now, Mr. Speaker, now you think any student of economics will tell you, and I don't profess to be any, 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 any economy, I didn't tell anybody. My CV is very simple. I profess to be nothing. No. <laughs> my CV is different. And the name of my party, the name of my party is the St. Lucia Labour Party. I know no party called the Union Workers' Party. <laughs> So, so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker, that when things are said and they sound to be right, when people are accused of all sorts of things, Mr. Speaker, I said clearly, clearly, that this loan is for budgetary support. The member of Vivot for Castries, from Miku South, says, what is budgetary support? I mean, what is budgetary support? So, Mr. Speaker, next week, we are going to be debating the estimates. And already, he has begun to call the quest, to call to question what's in the estimates. Already, you know. He, start, he started already to plant seeds of misinformation and disinformation. He started already. He started. The same way he had some mis, misguided thing about rate of employment. After the, 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 it was clearly stated why. But he continues about rate of employment, read this, read that. He has already begun to plant the seeds of misinformation and disinformation in the, in the heads of the people of St. Lucia, by already beginning to question the government's performance even before, even before he has seen the results. But I can assure the public of St. Lucia that next week, when we show the government's financial statement, you will see a steady improvement in the financial statement of the government of St. Lucia. A steady improvement, Mr. Speaker, a steady improvement. And you will see that the policies of this government has led and will lead all things being equal because they are downside risks. And we are clear about the downside risks. We lead to St. Lucia having the lowest level of unemployment in St. Lucia for a long time.
including youth unemployment. And they came here. Instead of allowing the youth economy to mushroom and see what happens, he criticized it. They papi showed it. They made a mess. You understand? He, his idea of jobs for young people was only one idea. One idea only. DSH. DSH, skin horses. One idea. You like to see the young men in Beaufort, they will take pride to be horses. That is, that is the idea of jobs. It'll be pride to be horses. Pride. That's his idea. And the second idea, Mr. Speaker, which idea that we started, Vivot Soft MP, we started, was in the call centers. We started. So he pretends he's a king of call centers. Call centers started on us. We went into business with a local businessman. We promoted a local businessman to go into call centers under the, the leadership of the man of Viva South. We were the revolutionary people as far as that's concerned. But we didn't give that businessman a yacht. So, you know, the time will come. The time will come when we'll have to debate. The time will come when we will be able to deal with these issues. Because these issues of misinformation that have been spread in this country, continuously causing it, and always, and before they do, Kyo Vole Avoyo Kyo. He accuses us. Mr. Speaker, which member of this honorable house wastes, we waste money? Where is the waste? Where is the waste? Point out the waste. Tell me where the waste is. What have we done? We bought vehicles for the police? That's what we've done. Where's the waste? These gentlemen, the cars that they drive are cars you gave them. <laughs> are cars you gave your ministers. And they complain every day about the state of the cars. Some of them stop, stopping everywhere. <coughs> you understand? So you come about waste and waste. The offices that, that, that we have, the offices that, the, the office that are offices that you are the one who did, who did the offices back. Then they, they came and they said, I spent $100,000 in my office. I have asked everybody to come and see what $100,000 I spent. All I did is I changed a set of chairs and I painted there. And it's leaking. So this waste, where, where's the waste? The Prime Minister's office? The, the change is there. Is he, he's the one who did it, not me. Not me. <clears throat> where, where's the waste? Tell me. Where is the waste? Point out directly where is the waste. For these gentlemen to travel, Mr. Speaker, they have to get permission. Yeah. So, you know, so, Mr. Speaker, so you, you talk about, talking about, talking about the Prime Minister's official residence. They mash up piece of it. <laughs> the damaged piece of it, Mr. Speaker. And when, after the damaged piece of it, they take it out completely. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I just want to, I just want to be the speaker, and I'm sorry for people who think I should not speak, Mr. Speaker, but I must speak. Because if I don't speak, these things, people believe these things. People believe these things. Then yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I did not officially congratulate Julian Alfred, but I heard something about a uh, round table about Julian Alfred, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and a lot of and, and, and it was a friendly, a friendly debate, you know, a friendly questionnaire. Tell the people why they forever. Well, you know, I can tell you, they, might, they may have been a lull in giving, but I can tell you what they did was four times more, even though they may be a lull. And from since she was in primary school. In Jamaica. The lady was in primary school, where? Is she Yes. But you know, when they say these things, they say, primary school in Jamaica. But you know, in the haste, in the haste to try to discredit the, the, to discredit the government, in the haste to pretend that nothing is going in Saint Lucia, nothing right is going in Saint Lucia. Saint Lucia is in a mess. Saint Lucia is in is in is in complete chaos. I mean, that is the impression that the opposition wants to give the world about Saint Lucia. That's it. and that's not good, Mr. Speaker. That's not good. You can't afford to burn the house to kill a rat. You should not do that. And what you're doing is you deliberately spread
spreading falsities. You deliberately taking information you know is incorrect and peddling it, Mr. Speaker, just because you are not in government. Stop it, Mr. Speaker. Stop it. Mr. Speaker, I ask members to support this resolution. Thank you very much.